Each and every week, Coach Mitch Gaspard is kind enough to join us on the Bud Light Hotline presented by Adams Beverages. And i got to confess, there was a time last night, Coach, where I didn't know if you and I'd be through in time with the ball game in order to do this interview. But uh, heck of a game. Really gutty effort. Congratulations on the win. Yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, it was. It was a, obviously a long game and just just a lot of a lot of different things that happened, you know, throughout the course of, of thirteen innings and uh I was proud of the way our guys, you know, continued to respond and just showed a lot of resiliency and a lot of fight in there and uh so that's that's one of those good team wins that uh like I said, just about everyone on the roster contributed in some way to help us get that W last time. Five hours and twelve minutes. Uh I know how tired I was and I didn't I didn't play a lick from a mental standpoint. How exhausting is something like that for a staff and for the players? Well, it, it, it's exhausting, but it certainly helps when you win the game. And sure. I think that, you know, helps in a lot of different ways to recover, you know, the next day. Because, really, you know, both teams were in the same position. I mean, we both sides, you know, used the majority of the bullpen last night. And many guys off both benches came in and, you know, played multiple innings, and, and uh, so it is an exhausting, you know, both physically and mentally, and uh, it's particularly when you have it in game one and you got to bounce back for games two and three. So, But it, it certainly helps when you win the game because you've got that good feel to you. And like I said, when you win that, uh, that's one of those good team wins that, uh, you know, I think it just helps you, you know, just come even closer as a team. In the wins and the losses you've had the last couple of weeks, it seems like you're having to you're having to fight from behind. Uh, last night, great to get off to a, a good start. You score four runs in the second, and I, I realize that lead didn't last too terribly long. Uh, but what, if anything, was different early in the game last night as opposed to maybe the last handful or so? Well, I, I thought, you know, offensively, I thought our approach was better. We had uh, – we did a much better job with two strikes. You know, we, we were able to move the ball. We got some 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 key hits and some big moments, but we used the whole field. And, you know, we, we really worked hard on some things after the Auburn game at our practice Thursday and really just stand on the ball and take the ball back to the middle of the field and the other way and, and kind of tinkered with our two-strike approach. And, and I, I thought, you know, certainly guys uh, showed a great effort to do that. I think we, you know, had some – rewards from it and uh and then on the other side you know it was one of those you know any these sec games are tough we all know that no team's going to quit on either side and you just kind of play every pitch and every game plays out differently and you know what you can control is just your attitude and and how you go about it each pitch and and you know for the most part uh you know this this group's been pretty resilient we we've played extremely hard uh, there's certain some areas we got to continue to get better in, uh, but but I like as I've said many times that there's many really good qualities that that you know this team has shown you know through 25 games or so. Jeffrey Bramlett came out in was it the fifth inning, coach? That you it, it, that you yeah played? he he was stacked with four innings of work, but yeah he started the fifth inning, and uh, you know one thing with him that's the one thing about the Thursday game that. Uh, you know, that one day short rest, particularly for the college arm, uh, you know, that, that's a little bit of a challenge when, you know, they're, these guys are so routine oriented. When you cut that one day off, uh, sometimes they're just not quite as sharp, particularly when you get into the middle of the, middle of the game. Cause that, I, I thought Jeffrey was really good, you know, his first three innings or so, but as he hit about 75, 80 pitches, you could see, yeah, you know, he, he was a little bit exhausted last night. So if I guess my question is, if that's Friday, is that a situation where you're probably going to stick with him just a, a little bit longer as opposed to a yeah, Thursday? Yeah, we, we, we would, and but with one day short rest, and and a lot of that too, Chris, is just our eyes. You know, when we see right. a kid and what his body language looks like. I mean, I know Jeffrey's going to battle and compete as long as we have him out there, but I think too you you got to realize it's a long season. There's a lot of starts in front of him. And I thought when he hit, you know, the 80 pitch mark, uh, you know, the ball started getting up. Uh, velocity was a little bit down at that point. So just thought it was the right decision 
you know, to get him on uh, on a you know, so particularly with you know, short days rest. You also knew Co- now. First of all, you didn't know you're going to need 13 innings of of a pitching staff, but you knew you had more available to you with Burroughs. And, and before we get to Thomas and, and what he was able to do, um, your depth really showing even last night. I know it wasn't the best best outing for Kyle, but he's had some good moments for you. And you you threw what six guys before you ever got to Burroughs. Yeah, that's that's correct. We ended up throwing. You know, seven guys last night, and you know, a couple of them were short stints, but uh, you know, had you know, few guys that threw enough where probably won't see them again this weekend. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about Matt Foster, the coach, because he has been really, really good for you. Um, but I maybe I guess the longest outing he's had, isn't it? Uh, and, yeah, I- and to keep them scoreless throughout that time obviously huge in, in terms of getting the win well diff- that was the difference in the game and you know and every inning was the the critical inning where obviously they score game over so and they you know they reached second base you know I, I know two of the innings uh that he was out so he made some big pitches you know it, it, it helps a guy like Matt that you know he had been a starter uh, you know, throughout his junior college career. And I think when those guys get in that setting, even though he's been a reliever for us and kind of a setup type guy, you know, early on, uh, he kind of got in that starter mentality last night and was able to give us, you know, four what I thought was his best outing, you know, of the year. Talking, of course, with Bama baseball coach Mitch Gaspard. He's joining us, as all of our guests do, on the Bud Light Hotline presented by Adams Beverages. When did you know that? that Burroughs was going to be able to go uh, and how stinking nice was it to see him come out of the pen in the bottom of the 13th? Well, to answer that first, it was really nice to, to have him come out. And, you know, he's such a confident guy and he rubs off on our team and our guys really believe in him and you know, our coaching staff believes in him just through the success that he's had with us. But, uh, you know, it, it was really we started feeling pretty good earlier in the week, Tuesday. Uh, you know, he threw in the bullpen and felt really good. And then, uh, you know, at practice Thursday was kind of the last, you know, hoorah there before we got a yes or no. And, and uh, threw about 20, 25 pitches in the pen. You know, gave me the thumbs up. Hey, I'm ready to go tomorrow night. And uh, so, and we knew, you know, like last night that, you always have a little bit of that risk when a guy hasn't really got, in, got on the game mound in three weeks or so that there's going to be a little rust in there. And, uh, and we saw that some last night with the command. And uh, But, again, I, you know, as good of an arm and, and the good as competitor as Tommy is, I think, uh, you know, he likes the crunch time, and that's why, you know, he's so good in that last inning. And when the game got hot and the bases are loaded and just walk three guys, uh, he just really tightened the belt, and then he gets three consecutive punch-outs to end the game. Last weekend, um, Chandler Taylor, well, let's go back two weeks. He's the SEC freshman of the week after what happened in Baton Rouge. Then you go to the series last week, and he's he's got a chance to make two plays in the series that – that um, second batter of the first game against Tennessee, he almost robs the guy of a home run, has it pop out of his glove, and it, it becomes a, a two-run shot. He almost throws a guy out in game three. This guy's been really close defensively, even though we talk about his offense. Coach, I'm guessing you weren't surprised to see the two plays that he made um, late. I'll, I'll call it in regulation, I guess, the seventh and eighth innings, the, the throw at home and then the diving stab. Uh, in that eighth inning that helped preserve the tie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, two game-changing plays on the defensive end. And, you know, the one thing Chandler has shown, I mean, we know, you know, where the potential can go. I mean, he's such an offensive, you know, presence in the lineup. But he's, you know, he's got so much power and, you know, he's still making adjustments and, and those things. But, you know, he's a really good athlete. I mean, he's a guy that can do many things. He's a good runner. He's got a great arm in right field. Uh, he's a really confident kid, and I think that shows. You know, anytime a guy can, you know, you know, strike out you know three, four times in a game, and then 
come back, hit big doubles, big homers. And, uh, you know, the game doesn't affect him. He doesn't lose his confidence. He keeps going, and he doesn't bring, you know, if he has some struggles on the offensive end, he doesn't bring it on the defensive side. And, and uh, you know, particularly for a young player in this league, I mean, to, to be able to do that night in, night out, I think that just, you know, sets up for a guy that can be a really good player, you know, in the SEC and here at Alabama. Coach, I've heard a lot of people before you ever got close to conference play talking about how much they love the makeup of your team. I've heard you say it. I've heard other members of the staff and the players themselves because it's such a close, tight-knit group. And to me, an example of that is two guys who were key parts last night for you, Daniel Kujan and Taylor Poe. These are older guys, Coach, who haven't, you know, been everyday players for you. Kujan maybe more so than than Taylor, but they wait on their opportunity. They work hard to be prepared, and then when they get that, they make the most of it. I, I know you're always happy to see anybody have success on your team, but I've got to think it's it's even more rewarding for guys in those type of circumstances. Well, you know, we we talk a lot about that. It's, you know, baseball is one thing, but it's just yeah, you know, life's all about opportunity and seizing the moment and. I think, you know, both those guys, you know, certainly did that last night. Daniel's done it, you know, through the, you know, he gets an opportunity when Connor Short, you know, gets a concussion three weeks ago and steps in at LSU and plays tremendous and really has worked his way into the lineup and just continues to have success. And, you know, I mean, Poe's been catching in the bullpen all year and uh, just kind of sitting there waiting his turn and, and, uh, yeah, I, I tell guys from day one, you know, all fall that, you know, there's a reason they're on the 35-man roster, and you never know when your opportunity is going to come. You just got to prepare every day and be ready for it, you know, when your number's call. And obviously, yeah, he was a guy that's done that. And, uh, you know, in his first opportunity, it just happens to be in a in a huge spot in the SEC game. And, you know, it's one thing he delivers the double, but I, I thought he did a great job behind the plate you know, catching some guys that aren't easy to catch in Foster and Burroughs. Last thing, and I'll let you run, and I'll, I'll do so, Coach, with the obligatory Keith Holcomb question. Uh, you, you met with the media on Thursday, and then you and I were visiting on uh, – uh, hey, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. Uh, I guess it would have been Monday. Excuse me, the week's gotten away from me. Monday you talked to the press, and then – you you and I are together on your radio show Monday night, and then then some things changed. You didn't think you're going to have Keith, and he did. Just kind of clarify, kind of where where he is for the rest of the weekend with with baseball and with football, if you as best you can. Sure, and and and, on, and a lot of this is uh, I think on both sides, both ourselves with baseball and obviously with Coach Saban and football, trying to keep Keith in the best position to have success success on both ends, and, and some of it is Keith's decision, too, on, on what he's able to do, you know, from a health standpoint and just body-wise. So, you know, they've got a big scrimmage on Saturday. It's really important, I think, for Keith to be able to compete in the football scrimmage. So, you know, the decision that was made was, you know, Keith, you know, went back after the Auburn game uh, and worked out with football Wednesday. Uh, we had an administrator that was able to bring him up uh, Wednesday night after practice, obviously he played in the ball game last night. He's available tonight. Uh, we'll play, and uh, but uh, after the ball game tonight, he's going to head back to Tuscaloosa and and, uh, and he'll scrimmage uh, Saturday with the football team. So, and you know, as I've said all along, and that was kind of the plan with Keith through this, you know, next three weeks of uh, spring training. Uh, there's just certain days with football he has to be there, and it's you know super important because he's. He's competing, uh, you know, to, to be an everyday player there. And, and uh, so, like I said, we're, we're just – Keith is the one that makes this work because he has a willingness and a drive to, uh, I think, to be great on both sides. And uh, he certainly has impacted our team in a very positive way. And, uh, you know, I, I think he can be another, you know, really special player here. Uh, and he's showing signs of that now. But uh, – Really, it, it's a little bit of a balancing act, but it, it works, I think, because of Keith and the way that, that he goes about it in his drive to, you know, to make it work. So, uh, but that's as far as availability, 
right now. He's available to play tonight, but he he will head back you know after the ball game tonight and uh, will scrimmage with the football team tomorrow.